Godzilla Cinema back, another edition. How we doing out there? Good, great, grand, yang, 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 yang. Wonderful. As you see on your screen, your dial. However, you are joining us today. I thank you. I thank you much. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't want to do this anymore, man. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Once you see, so I. I think I'm gonna. Well, I, I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I. I know I stepped up on this one. I saw a lot of the other reviews coming out <clears throat> for this one, and they re- reviewed the uh, package as a whole. Not your boy. That's half-assing shit. So if any of you people are listening out there that, you know, kind of use my show as, you know, maybe a blueprint of what not to do or use my show to gain ideas, oh, I've heard a couple of you out there that have kind of ripped my structure. It's quite all right. There, this is, this is radio. I know we call it podcast, but this is radio, you know, if we're talking about the same thing. But I, I think when you literally beat for beat my structure, then, wow, well, that's a little annoying. But I'm, I'm sitting here looking online um looking at kind of some of the uh promotion and coverage that went along with this and I was like what the fuck there's four movies in this box set and you just reviewed the box set as a whole shame shame on you I we don't half ass shit here at the Yellow Cinema podcast we do we uh, the only reason I half ass shit is because I have a real job that pays me real money so I do this as it, what started out as a hobby, what started out as therapy, has turned into the goddamn bane of my existence. As you see on your screen, your dial, massacre time. Or let me see if I can do this. This is this is my first. I always like doing the first run through with you guys, just so that you feel better about yourselves. You know, like <laughs> he can't pronounce shit either. Well, you know, I. I <laughs> but I try. So, as you see on your dial, I'm not going to put the Italian title up there. It's a little lengthy, a little wordy, a little long in the tooth. Uh, Massacre Time with Franco Nero, uh, also known as Le Colt Cant... Le Colt Cantar- Cantarano, Le Colt Cantarano, La Morte e Fu Tempo di Mascaro. That was terrible. Anyway... Yeah, massa- Massacre Time. Uh, came out in 1966. So, Ellis Cinema is on a trail of vengeance. The bloody trail of vengeance. So, this was actually the first film in the uh, Vengeance Trails box set. Uh, what is what is it actually called? Yes, Vengeance Trails. Uh, just released by Arrow Video, a four-movie box set. Ha, 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 damn. I, I had so much fun. I, I admittedly, by the time I got to the fourth one, which was, And God Said to Cain, um, I, I, I need... It's kind of like... Uh, did you guys listen to the show... I don't know. It might even been last year. Fuck, I don't even remember. Um, I uh, I spent like two months only watching Twin Peaks, only watching David Lynch stuff. I, I mean, just just Twin Peaks. I, I got a nice collector's edition box set, and uh, that's really all I watched for two months, maybe maybe a little less. Um, and I was just like, by the time I got done and I had put on something normal, I was just like, good God almighty, that is, that is not good for the brain to do two months straight of David Lynch. And I love David Lynch, but holy shit, uh, kind of similar in, uh, the, the trail, the Ellis cinema goes on a trail, uh, takes a trail to vengeance. Uh, by the time I got to, and God said to Kane, I was like, I had seen, I, I, too much spaghetti for me. Too much spaghetti westerns. Um, Only because when you go down, it kind of like a similar, uh, similar uh, like Shaw Brothers, you know, the Kung Fu Titans that are Shaw Brothers. Well, no more. But at the time, if you go down a rabbit hole on that, you start to see a lot of very similar plot devices. And um, Spaghetti Westerns are no different. Um, And not just to say, you know, these four, but, you know, there's always, like, the Annie hero that enters the town. And, you know, you guys, I guess the closest thing, I know a lot of the 
20 somethings that listen to the show the closest thing that you've gotten to a spaghetti western and i use that term loosely for this film because one because he does his own thing and it's such a personal fucking such a signature whatever but um Django Unchained with uh Jamie Foxx the Quentin Tarantino one um uh with Leo and Samuel L and Christoph Waltz um that's probably the closest thing that you've gotten to a spaghetti western and um so a lot a lot of things that we can talk about here I'll I'm going to try to keep all these at a half hour cuz I am going to do all fucking four of them cuz I ain't no goddamn rube I ain't lazy like most of you, I did not see, actually all of you, I can say that, all of you, every review that I saw come out for Vengeance Trails did the box set as a whole. Now you maybe gave a little synopsis, a little synopsis, you know, amongst your, you know, paragraph synopsis, but fuck no, we gotta talk about some more things. Not necessarily that it's gonna be good, you know, I could do four episodes of Wasting Your Time, that's very possible too, but I'm sitting there looking, and I'm just like, man, you know, fucking the, the, the great people at Arrow and what they do, they give you this this uh, box set to look over, and you half-ass it. You half-ass it. So, Massacre Time, uh, Spaghetti Western from 1966. 1960, that's another thing, too, is I, uh, uh, I mean, you watch four movies from the 60s, and you start... <laughs> You're just like, oh man, the treatment of women. Now, if if I was an un- uncultured swine, like a couple of my friends who s- still in circa '01, and you know, like she should be doing in the kitchen doing dishes. Well, maybe th- these movies are fucking awesome to you, but by the fourth time, I had just kind of gotten over the women being slapped and everything. And don't get me wrong, it's fine. It's fine to do that cinematically. Calm down cinematically. I say again cinematically not in real life to haul off and hit your woman because you won't do the dishes but um by the fourth film you know third fourth film i was just kind of like ah. <laughs> ah man we had it twisted back in the day you know we just the, the level the 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 lack of respect that we had for um foreigners and women it's just it, you know, it, it's no. You, I, so I guess I I make a statement to you here now. You, you, some of you ladies uh, and men, uh, for that matter, give some of us men a chance. Those that are trying a chance to deprogram and whatever, because like I, I would have watched that movie ten years ago, and I probably like the fact that a woman got slapped or whatever, uh, I wouldn't have been like, yeah, fuck yeah. But uh, it wouldn't have registered the way that it did now where I was just like, ah. And here's the thing. I think that you should slap women cinematically. You should kill pets cinematically because I think in terms of a plot device, that that hook, I mean, for me, it's very... um, it doesn't take much. It's like John Wick and the dog, you know? Like, once they killed the dog, I was like, man, fuck you people, you know? So, as long as you do that, that's fine. But, um, what was I reading the other day? Um, something that Poe had said, Edgar Allan Poe, but I, uh, it, it escapes me now. Something to the extent of there's nothing more fucking poetic than... A beautiful woman <laughs> getting murdered or something. I, 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 I'm fucking it up. I'm fucking it up. But it's, it's been around a long time, and, and I, uh, it's got to be on here. I know. I took a. I took quite a few fucking notes for this. I'm pretty sure that I wrote it down. Go on now, Sean. Go on. Commentary. Nope. Nope. I must. It must have been in a different one. But um, yeah. So by the time I got to the fourth film, I was just kind of like, yeah, kind of burnt out a little bit. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I was like, I'm going to take September off. I'm not going to do a podcast in September. That day, ladies and gentlemen, or however you identify, that day, 13 movies came in <laughs> by distributors. And I was like, I'm going to take September off. And distributors were like, the fuck you are. <laughs> I got fucking a box set with three movies in it and then a ton of collector's editions. I mean, the Dune one alone to go through the bonus features is going to be a 
boy, going to have to take a significant bite. It's going to take me a few days, maybe even a week or two to compile all, all that. And now if I didn't have uh, a big boy job, um, well, then I would do, I wouldn't complain at all. Actually, I would, uh, this, it would just be fun. But do you have any idea if you talk, if you get paid to talk for 10 hours and then you come home and you're kind you have this obligation to talk for no money. Oof. <laughs> kind of, you don't get as pumped up as as you may. And uh, but anyway, I, I digress. I'm ripping on people, so we're gonna do one by one, ladies and gentlemen. And the first stop on the vengeance trail is massacre time, starring Frank O'Nero as Tom, George Hilton as Jeffrey. Nino, oh fuck, and I even practiced this one. Nino Castle Nuovo, yeah, I think I did it. Castle, Castle Nuovo, shit. Nino Castle, fuck. Nino Castle Nuovo, Nuovo, Nino Castle Nuovo. There we go. Uh, plays Junior. Linda Cini is the saloon owner, otherwise known as Lynn Shane. Uh, Giuseppe. Adabati, um, who also went by John Douglas, you got to understand, like in the times of Italian westerns, what they would do is they'd pull people all over the world, all over the world. Hey, the Italian directors would be like, we're not going to shoot any sound. We're just going to roll, roll the camera and we'll do sound and post. So you got German leads, you got leads from the States, you got actual Italian leads, you got people from the UK and it is just just all over the board um now not not necessarily the case in massacre time but once I start going the, down the line um we're definitely going to touch on those cuz it's just super weird you know like if you're not familiar with a spaghetti western um I could see kind of the way that it's presented to you being a little jarring for a lot of you younger viewers but one appreciate where shit started you know uh two uh always push yourself outside your boundaries you know like i when i had got this box set i had just come off a of fucking scent so i told you guys i was writing a western script for a friend of mine who their country just went into a third lockdown so who the fuck knows if that's ever going to happen because the actors that were attached to it are now attached to different projects because of covid and everything and you know what we say about that that's showbiz babe a lot of talking Unfortunately, my man has to understand that I took a lot of fucking time. <laughs> I took a lot of time to put that shit together. It's not his fault. He didn't make COVID. Or maybe he did, the son of a bitch. Um, yeah, so Giuseppe Adabati plays Scott. Uh, Senior Scott, who is actually... He kind of like, he runs the town, but it's his son, Junior, who's out of control. Uh, Tom Falegi, who plays a mining boss. Rina Franchetti, who plays Mercedes or Mercedes, Mercedes. Yu Chang, uh, Yu Cheng, who plays the Undertaker, and Asan uh, Asan Noah, Asan Noah, Runa Chigua, Runa Chigagua, Chigagua, Asano, no, Asan Noe, Asan Noe, Runa Chigagua. There, yep. He plays Sanko. Pretty good character, too. Doesn't say much, but fucking effective, mate. The um, reason why I kind of jumped at the opportunity to um, review uh, these films is definitely for this first one on the list, because um, for anybody that knows me, they know that I'm a fan of horror um, and uh, an actual fan. I don't mean watching just Bloomhouse stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but like I I watch any, everything from the fucking fifties to fucking modern, whatever. Um, Lucio Fulci, who did zombie, just a ton of stuff that I like. But uh, horror fans, as some of you may know, most of you probably don't know. Lucio Fulci, the director of Massacre Time, who made his name in horror. Uh, did comedies first, and in fact, this was, um, I, I think this was his first feature, 
I could be wrong on that. I probably am. Um, his, uh, his first um, piece outside of comedy. And I got to be honest with you, man, he's just a good director. You know, I, I think I hate it when sometimes these people get labeled as this, that, or the other, you know, because he's basically... Um, you know, just kind of the Italian whore godfather as he's configured. And I tell you what, Massacre Time, for the most part, is a pretty goddamn good Western. And I thought the plot ki- uh, plot twist, though kind of shoehorned, I think it still works, at least in the way that it's presented to you. Um, it was written by, Fern- uh, Massacre Time was written by Fernando DeLeo. Uh, DP was Ricardo Pelatini. And that's another thing, too. Um, about these uh, spaghetti westerns, a lot of it had to do with the visuals back in the day. Like, people hadn't seen <sighs> the content that they were seeing presented the way that it was. It, you know, it's very flashy and stylish, and, you know, it was just a boom um, in the late 60s of when this started um, to go. Uh, and, 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 Franco Nero, I don't even know how many westerns he's done off the top of my head, but it's kind of wild to think about that he kind of catapulted himself into superstardom with Django. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, not to be confused with Django Unchained with Jamie Foxx. No, no, the original Django with Franco Nero, who has the Gatlin gun that he drags around in a coffin fucking i love that i love that so much like we um another thing you see that happens in spaghetti westerns much like in Django, is uh there's always a man alone walking through the dark desert uh well not necessarily dark but walking through the dry desert hot as fuck and in Django, he's dragging a coffin and the spoiler alert coffin contains a gatlin gun which is Awesome. I I love that. And in fact, in the Western that I... Well, I'm not going to tell you. You guys are fucking... You guys are chiselers. Anyway, DP was Ricardo Pelatini. Art director was Sergio Canavari. Canavari. Film editor, and the reason why we have to bring up the editors, do you have any idea what those editors had to go back or go through back in the day? Do you have any idea? I don't think you do. A lot of cutting and pasting, l- literally, not not computer cut and pasting. We're talking actual film reels, fucking pasting cigarette hanging out of your mouth for 72 hours straight. That's that. I, I don't think we give editors from back in the day enough love. Well, I, I, I actually, I just think we don't give crew members outside of writers, directors. Uh, we don't show them love at all. I, I'm still standing at the forefront fighting the good fight for stunt men and women. I really am. I think they are the most underappreciated people on a film set. You get, you think that looked awesome when that guy got thrown out the window or off a roof or whatever the case? Yeah, thank your stuntmen. Because <laughs> I hate to tell you, Leo's not going off that roof. You know, Brad Pitt didn't go through that window. So, and I, I just, I don't understand it because it's such a selling point on the art. It, it's more believable if, you know, somebody goes through a window as opposed to somebody doesn't, you know, I, I'm now going, oh shit, fucking, we're in the thick of it now. Uh, yeah, film editor, uh, or, Ornella Michelli, Ornella Michelli, and music by, in the film, when you're watching the film, it goes by Lalo Gori, but if you do a little further research, it's actually Cori, Coriola, Coriolano, Coriolano Gori, Coriolano Gori. Um, like I said, it goes by Lalo Gori in the actual film. And uh, something else about all spaghetti westerns is they all have theme songs. They all have their own theme songs. So in this one, uh, in Massacre Time, it's A Man Alone. And you know all those sounds that you hear in a Quentin Tarantino film? Uh, I guess the most notable would be like the twang of a guitar. That is all this shit, mate. That is all this this 60s fucking uh, spaghetti westerns. I mean, in fact, um, I had Kyle on, and he had kind of stressed, like, that's what takes away from his appreciation of Quentin Tarantino is because he knows where everything came from. And me, I just, I don't know, glass half full guy. Well, you can like both, mate, and you don't have to degrade one for the other. 
just because one did it first doesn't mean that it couldn't be do- done better. Because here's the thing, like, I, just for viewing purposes, Django Unchained destroys all these movies. But at the same time, like, one, it came 50 years after, and two, you have arguably the most authentic filmmaker ever. And, you know, I'm not taken away from... Kubrick and Spielberg, and but but I would argue Spielberg isn't super authentic. He's just really good at making movies with a lot of money, um, and that's not to say he's not a good director. Everybody, calm the fuck down. Jaws is in my five. Okay, just everybody relax. It's just like in terms of like uh, I don't know. The, there's just a style. There's just a style that Tarantino has. And you watch these films, Massacre Time. Um, and you see where it comes from. And I just, for me, it just kind of makes me giddy across the board because I know of both. I know of both and I can appreciate both. Um, but anyway, let's talk a little bit, just a smidge about, um, what Massacre Time is about. I'm going to try to keep these episodes relatively short so that I can do all four without burning myself out because watching them was... A feat in itself. Not that they were hard to watch. I had a good time and everything. But like, you know, it's four fucking movies after I worked a 50, 50 hour work week. Like the shit just isn't easy as all that. You feel me, audience? You feel me? I, I dare you. <laughs> if you're if you're in a job where you have to talk to people all the time, I tell me how much you want to go home and talk. <laughs> um. Anyway, gold prospector Tom Corbett receives a note from family friend Carradine. Summoning him home to the Laramie town. He finds the place is unrecognizable with the Scott family logo emblazoned on everything from the bank to the saloon to the former Corbett family residence. I think we're talking about Moida. Hmm? Moida. The family home was entrusted to Tom's brother Jeffrey following the death of their widowed mother. But Jeffrey is now an alcoholic. Uh, Jeffrey's played by George Hilton. Hell of a job. Uh, But Jeffrey is now an alcoholic who lives outside of town in a hevel with their childhood nursemaid. And in fact, on first watch, thought it was their mother. And uh, there's some scenes that hit a little differently because I thought that it was the mother. It was not the mother. It was just the housemaid that they, nursemaid that they grew up. Nevertheless... There were still parts of it that stung. Uh, Their childhood nursemaid, a Native American named Mercedes. Scott Sr. is a hard man, father of Junior. Junior's kind of remind me, uh, he just a fucking loose cannon, Junior is. But Senior Scott is a hard man who is gradually dispossessing the local farmers and ranchers and taking ownership of their land. It, it is it is his son Jason, but we don't we don't say Jason that much or that often. We say Junior throughout the film. It is his son Junior, no yep, known as Junior, who implements Scott's law with a whip of iron. Whip of iron. Iron. Terrifying the locals and murdering them at will. When Tom visits Carradine to find out why he's been sent for, the mystery deepens. As Karen Carradine and his whole fucking family have been massacred. Yeah, so you know, Ella Cinema Vengeance Trails. <laughs> Just, I mean, the all every single one of these next movie or these these next few that I'm gonna do for you, it is all a man going to claim what's rightfully his to avenge what he feels he should avenge to. It, it, I mean, to to claim what is rightfully his, and I'm all right with it. I don't. I mean, it's funny. I'm such a fucking hypocrite because I was just complaining to someone the other day. But I, I'm not. I guess I'm not overly a hypocrite because it had to do more so with TV. And what I was trying to explain was just like I have seen every trope that you can possibly imagine. Man versus man, man versus woman, man versus beast, you know, you name it, I've seen it. Um, I think it's a lot easier for me to do, to accept a tried and true trope in 90 minutes than it is in 10 hours. So, and like I said, it's just TV is so time consuming. There's so much good stuff out there. 
Um, and I'm actually missing all the good stuff because I just can't do it. Like, I like the fact that there's a quick finality in movie, which blows my mind because people will be like, I can't watch a two-hour movie. And it's like, well, you watched six episodes of Ted Lasso straight. That's like three and a half, four hours. <laughs> You know, I can't watch The Irishman. It's over three hours. You're a fool. <laughs> You're a fool. I don't get it. But hey, you know, live your life. Whatever. I just, I'm the flip side of that. I choose two hours done, not two hours. Okay, I got seven more episodes left. All an hour piece. <laughs> I can't. This is too much for me. Ah, but it did start snowfall recently, which is, I knew that I was going to have a bit of fun with the snowfall. Um,. So when Fulci did Mask Her Time in 66, like I said, he was mostly doing um, lighter films um, of the of the comedic type, you know, not bloody fucking... <sighs> he, he actually started to trend because, like, when you, when you look at Sergio Leone's stuff, Sergio Leone, Sergio Leone, however, uh, Sergio Leone's stuff, it it's almost like a bit of irony into the violence, you know, where, it, 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 oh, I forgot, 20-something, Sergio Leone <laughs> is the good, bad, the ugly, fistful of dollars, that, that, that Sergio, um, but it, there's almost a hint of irony to the violence, whereas this is, there's no irony in, in it whatsoever, I mean, the opening scene, I knew, all right, I'll just tell you the opening scene, and then I'll get the hell out of here. Because my recommend, see Masker Time for sure. Um, the the uh, digital transfer that uh, Arrow did, second to none, as it always is. Um, I love that they, for each disc, each movie, you got to choose between the Italian and American version, and I'm such a psychopath that I actually watched all four in Italian, and then I watched all four of them in American. And I got to tell you, if I had any beef with uh, Arrow Video, I just want you to know, your English versions do not match your subtitles. In fact, there was some things that were significantly darker that were being said than what was being depicted in the subtitles. Like, I think, like, one guy, like, they were, I don't know, he was just like, kill this, kill this guy or whatever, and then it says, uh, in subtitles, it's like, he's dirty, we, we should pay him no mind, and I'm like, Nah, I'm pretty sure you just said you should kill him. And that is not what the sub T's are saying right now. Um, I knew I was going to like this film from the opening jump. So, uh, opens up uh, tons of men on horseback and a bunch of fucking rabid dogs. Tons of them going ape shit. At least 20 of them. 10 to 20 of them. Rabid. They uh, pan over to just excellent cinematography throughout the entirety of this. Not as much as I liked in Banditos, but we'll talk about that later. Um, the opening scene, so men on horseback, all kind of smiling. They look like rich types. Dogs going ape shit, And then you see a like a bamboo fucking uh, box. And uh, Junior raises his hand, and lo and behold, out comes a fucking, just a withered man who has been beaten and starving and thirsty, and you can tell he's seeing the sun for the first time in a while. You can see where this is going, right? And uh, Junior raises his hand, and then gunshot goes off, and the chase begins, ladies and gentlemen. The dogs go after this running man, this Arnold Schwarzenegger. You guys get the joke? Running man? No. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the dogs take after this just man running frantically uh, through these woods, and ultimately, the dogs close in on him as he reaches the river. And they maul him. And you're definitely seeing this on screen. And what's so great is that's when the credits start to roll. And you have that song, A Man Alone, playing. Which is just, it's kind of, that's why I love Spaghetti Western so much. Because tonally it's jarring. Like, I can't imagine if you were an audience member in the 60s and you just watched this man get mauled to death by dogs and then... A man alone starts playing. You're just like, what the fuck? I just, I would love to have been a fly on the wall, kind of gauging people's reactions to that. Because I'm sitting there going, this is great. But then again, you know, I'm, 
I am at the time I was 20 years removed before being born when that had come out. So, uh, but yeah, you know, and then I was just like, fuck yeah, man. Fulci's the man doesn't give a fuck. We're just right, right in the first three minutes of the film. We're, we're already seeing this fucking slave getting mauled by, I already see that's the thing. I already, now I already hate, I, I, it, it, execution is everything because I already hated Junior, especially the way that he kind of like maniacally smiles as this man is getting mauled in the river by these dogs. I was just like, well, hook is there. The hook is there, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck that guy. I hope Junior fucking gets his. But will Franco Nero pull the trigger once some of these plot twists occur? Because you might find out that he was actually sent by somebody else to come back home. By somebody else. Anyway. All right. That's part one of Vengeance Tale. Uh, the, The Ellis Cinema walks the trail of vengeance. Massacre time. Probably my... Well, I don't know, man. I go back and forth. They were all good. They were, All four of them were good. Massacre Time starring Franco Nero, George Hilton, Nino Casanuovo, Lynn Shane, John M. Douglas, Tom Falegi, Rena Franchetti, Yu Chang, who at one point is blow-darting people. That's right. A San Noah Runa Chagua written by Fernando DeLeo Directed by Lucio Fulci and just again the DP Riccardo Palutini. Palutini. Fucking great. Ellis Cinema. First stop on the Vengeance Trail. Massacre time. And baby, does it end with a massacre. You get your massacre, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you worry about that. There will be a time for a massacre. And Lucio Fulci, uh. He goes all out. He goes all out. And this actually catapulted him into horror stardom because of how bloody it was. Massacre Time, available now. Arrow Video, four-disc box set. Bonus features out to Ace. 